This video will provide general guidelines to help you prepare for your total knee replacement. Always follow the specific instructions of your surgeon or therapist. Your knee contains a hinge joint where the end of the thigh bone meets the beginning of the large bone in your lower leg. The muscles and ligaments around the knee joint support your weight, provide stability, and help the joint move smoothly. Healthy joints have layers of smooth cartilage that cover the ends of the bones and act as a cushion, allowing the joint to move easily through its range of motion. When a joint loses this smooth surface and has irregular surfaces or has bone-to-bone -bone contact, this can cause pain and stiffness. A total joint replacement is an operation to replace the worn or damaged parts of your joint. The surfaces of the diseased joints are removed and replaced with a mechanical, artificial joint called a prosthesis. Some patients go home from the hospital and some patients will go to a rehabilitation or skilled nursing facility. It's important that you plan to have these arrangements made and help available before you come to the hospital. After your surgery, you will be busy healing and learning to use your new joint. If your surgeon has talked to you about going to a rehab facility after surgery, contact your insurance company to see which facilities are in network and go visit some of them. Have a list of at least three possible choices to give the hospital social worker after surgery. You do not need to request pre-authorization with your insurance for a rehab facility prior to surgery. We will do this once you are admitted to the hospital. Line up someone to help you. Have a person or people scheduled to help you every day for at least the first week you're home. You will need to have someone stay with you all day the entire first day when you return home. Your helper should be prepared to help you with a ride home from the hospital, getting in and out of the car, preparing meals, getting into and out of bed, with laundry and light housekeeping, and getting you to your follow-up appointments and physical therapy. If you are currently planning to go home, but do not have anyone to stay with you, consider staying with someone else for a week or two after surgery. If this is not possible, please think about going to a rehabilitation facility. Arrange to have someone collect your mail and take care of pets or loved ones, if necessary. There is equipment that can make your daily tasks easier, and whether you need these items depends on how much help is available to you. Everyone will need a walker or crutches after surgery. If you have your own, or are planning to borrow one, please bring them to the hospital so a physical therapist can evaluate them and make sure they are sized appropriately for you. Other items you might need are, if you are having difficulty getting on and off the toilet before your surgery and your commode seems low, you may consider an elevated toilet seat for tall individuals. A reacher is handy to help retrieve dropped items or to help you get on your shorts or pants. If you do not have a helper to assist you getting on shoes and socks, a sock donner and long-handled shoehorn are useful. A long-handled sponge can help you reach areas more easily in the shower. Another item that is useful for safety is a handheld shower hose. This allows the nozzle to move around you instead of you moving and spinning around it. Most insurances will help you pay for your walker or crutches. Other medical equipment will be your responsibility. Be sure to check with your insurance company to see what is and isn't covered. Your surgeon recommends home DVT pumps following joint replacement. We recommend wearing this pump at home or at the extended care facility to help reduce your risk of a deep vein thrombosis or blood clot after surgery. The pump should be used for four to six weeks after your operation. You should wear the pumps anytime you are sitting, resting, or lying down. The DVT pumps are used in conjunction with your pharmacological agent that your surgeon prescribes. You will be contacted by the vendor one week prior to pre-admission testing to schedule an appointment to learn more about DVT pumps. The unit will be delivered to your home prior to surgery if you decide to purchase and or insurance coverage for the pump. You may leave these pumps at home as we have pumps available for use while you are in the hospital. If you have not been contacted, please call 614-688-6367. Whether you go straight home or visit a facility first, it is important to have your home ready for your return before you go to the hospital. Have your bedroom on the first floor if possible.
Consider a bedside commode if the bathroom is far away from the bedroom. After your surgery, it is important to avoid a fall. Make pathways in your home. Arrange furniture in a way that allows you to easily maneuver around the house with your walker or crutches. Remove throw rugs or loose items on the floor like any long cords, computer, phone, lamps, etc. Get a nightlight to light a path to the bathroom. Arrange to have a home base where you will primarily spend your time when you are out of bed. Put your phone, favorite electronic devices, snacks, water bottles, TV remotes, etc. within easy reach. Pick a sturdy, high back chair that you will use as your primary seating. Avoid chairs with wheels and chairs that have low seats. Keep in mind that you will be using a walker or crutches for a few weeks, so it will be difficult for you to carry anything. A backpack or fanny pack works well for carrying small items like your phone, snacks, and drinks. If you have steps to enter your house, consider having at least one railing installed if it's not there already. If you have pets at home, be very cautious when walking as they get underfoot easily and can create tripping hazards. When you first come home, it's often best to put your pet in a room separate from your main area until you get settled in a chair. Having a source of cold helps reduce swelling, which is very crucial to getting your knee to bend after surgery. You will be given a cooler device at the hospital that circulates cold water to cool your joint. You will be able to take the device home with you. Also, ice in a bag or frozen peas work well placed in a pillowcase. Some people find commercial gel packs convenient. It's a good idea to practice these before your surgery so you are familiar with them when you come to the hospital. You will do these exercises 10 times each, every hour after your surgery. It is important to wake up your leg and help prevent blood clots from forming. Ankle pumps. Move your foot up and down as if pushing down or letting up on a gas pedal in a car. Quad sets. Tighten your thigh muscles and push your knee down to the bed. Hold for five seconds and release. Gluteal sets. Squeeze your buttocks together. Hold for five seconds and release. Within 30 days of surgery, you will be scheduled by the surgeon's office for pre-admission testing, PAT. This appointment consists of a physical exam, blood work, and possibly a chest x-ray, electrocardiogram, or other testing to ensure that you are healthy for surgery. You will be called two business days before your surgery and provided with a time to arrive at the hospital. Generally, your arrival time will be two to three hours before your scheduled surgery time. You will be given a special cleanser to use prior to coming to the hospital to cleanse your skin of bacteria that is found normally there. At a minimum, you will use this to shower the day before and the morning of your surgery. You may be instructed to use it more days. Do not shave your surgery area. It could create a rash and delay your procedure. If you have a rash, your surgery may be canceled. A photo ID, insurance card or cards, copayment if required, a list of your medications and dosages, including herbal supplements and over-the-counter medications, a list of your allergies to foods and medications, a list of your personal contact numbers, your CPAP machine and settings if you have sleep apnea, a copy of your advanced directives, personal hygiene products, walker or crutches if you already have them or are planning to borrow them, cases for glasses, contacts, dentures, hearing aids, etc. Loose-fitting, comfortable clothing for the trip home. If you plan to go to a facility after your hospital stay, everything you bring should fit in one bag. Jewelry or valuables. Large amounts of money. Expensive electronics. Any home medications, unless specifically instructed. Footwear that is not appropriate for physical therapy, including footwear that is too tight, too loose, flip-flops, high heels, or footwear that is difficult to put on, such as boots. Home DVT pumps. Bring your pumps only if you plan to go to a skilled nursing facility. We realize that the time in a hospital can be an anxious time, but rest assured that we have a great team of healthcare workers who will guide you through your total joint replacement surgery and stay. Please report to the first floor registration area. 
After you are registered, you and your family will take the lobby elevators to the fourth floor surgery waiting area, where you and your family will wait until you are taken to the pre-op area. You will be escorted to a room on the pre-op unit where you will be prepared for surgery. You will be dressed in a gown and an IV will be started. You will be asked what surgery and which side is to be operated on. We know the answer, but it is a safety check that is done for all our surgeries. The surgical team will identify the operative area and your anesthesiologist will visit with you to discuss your anesthesia. After surgery, you will be taken to a recovery room where you will remain until it is time to go to your room. When you awake from surgery, you will be receiving oxygen through a nasal cannula. This oxygen helps with healing as well as helping you recover from anesthesia. You will have a blood pressure cuff on your arm and stickers on your chest to monitor your heart rate and blood pressure. You will also have an IV tube for continued fluids, antibiotics, and possible blood transfusions for a day or so. You will have a protective dressing on your incision area. You may have a drain in your bladder, which will remove urine. This drain is removed the first day after surgery. Many patients will have a wound drain that will remove excess blood as healing occurs. You will be taken to your room and your nurse will orient you to the call light and your room. You can begin your bed exercises. Remember, you will do these exercises every hour that you are awake. Once in your room, you should also begin using your incentive spirometer, breathing device, and do deep breathing exercises. This will help to prevent fluids collecting in your lungs. Because you will need to get used to your new joint and because of the medication that you've had for pain control and anesthesia, you will be placed on fall precautions. Do not attempt to get out of bed for any reason without a staff member assisting you. If you are on the orthopedic floor before 5 p.m., physical therapy will come up on the day of surgery to help you out of bed and to walk as much as you are able. If you are unable to walk at this time, the nurses will help you dangle your legs at bedside so you can get off your back. A leg splint may be used to protect your leg while you walk. You will use this splint as directed by your physical therapist. You will be taught how to use an ambulatory device to help you move about, that is, a walker or crutches, depending on the best equipment for you. Tell your loved ones to wash their hands when they come to visit you. We have hand sanitizer dispensers in all rooms and throughout the hospital. We are committed to keeping your discomfort to a minimum. Some medications are only given when you ask for something for pain. So if you are in pain, ask for something. The nurse will let you know what your pain management options are at any given time. You will also be using cold therapy, both at the hospital and at home, to help with pain management and swelling. You will also likely need to elevate your operative leg, especially at home, to help control swelling and pain. Physical therapy will explain the proper positioning for elevating your leg. Most patients will receive medications that they may not usually take. Your nurse will tell you what a new medicine is for and describe possible side effects. Some pain medication may cause constipation, nausea, vomiting, or itching. Blood thinners may cause itching, increased bruising, black stools, red urine, or excessive bleeding. If you experience these symptoms, let your nurse know. For a time during and after your surgery, you may be limited in your ability to walk and move around. This can cause your blood circulation to get sluggish or slow, and blood clots could develop. Leg exercises will help your blood circulation. In addition, your doctor will order a medicine called an anticoagulant. This medicine helps to keep your blood from clotting as easily. You will also have air compression wraps on your legs that attach to a small pump. Air is pumped in and out, compressing and relaxing around your legs to increase blood circulation. As you progress day by day with your walking and ability to move more normally with your new joint, the risk of blood clots forming is reduced. Starting the day after surgery, you will be doing exercises to help strengthen your operative leg and walking with therapy twice a day. It's important that you participate fully in these therapy sessions so that you regain your strength as quickly as possible. We will review any precautions you need to follow in order for you to protect your new joint. It's good to have your helpers be able to participate in your learning process so they can best assist you once you get home. We will give you instructions for exercises to continue doing after you leave the hospital 
and will send to the staff at the rehab facility if you are discharged there prior to home. Most of our total joint patients are discharged the first or second day after surgery. We will go through discharge instructions with you on the day you go home. A follow-up appointment with your surgeon will be scheduled. Your follow-up appointments are very important. If you are discharged at home, your instructions will include how to care for your incision dressing, when you may shower, exercises you should be doing, and what precautions you will keep until your surgeon tells you otherwise. You'll be given prescriptions for medicine you will need at home. Restart the medicines you are taking before surgery as directed by your doctor. If you are discharged to a rehab facility, these instructions will be sent to the staff who will be caring for you and the facility will provide your medications until you are discharged to home. If your plans are to go to a facility after your hospital stay, ambulance transportation can be arranged and may be partially covered by your insurance or Medicare. However, your family should be able to transport you from the hospital to home or a facility. Our staff will assist you to get into the car. For those of you going home, someone must drive you home after discharge. Getting in and out of the car will be very similar to how you will learn to get in and out of bed. You will not be able to drive yourself until you are no longer taking your pain medications. If your replacement is on the right side, you should not drive until you have full and safe use of that leg. That may take four to eight weeks depending on your surgery and recovery. You may be able to drive sooner if your replacement is on your left side. When you get home, call to set up your appointment for outpatient physical therapy in two weeks. For the next six to 12 weeks, your new joint will continue to heal. You will need to learn to balance your exercise periods with periods of rest. Do not overdo, push yourself beyond the limits of pain or break your restrictions. It's very important that you continue to do the exercises that you were instructed to do while you were in the hospital. You were given a written home program that will help remind you of the exercises that you should do. Remember that you need to be doing these exercises at least twice a day if you want to have a good result from your surgery. Do not wait for formal therapy to start. If your insurance provides, some total joint patients will receive home physical therapy and nursing visits. This therapy should only be for a couple of weeks until you start outpatient therapy. It's very important that you continue to bend your knee as you are instructed so that you get back better movement in your joint. The first two months are critical to your recovery. You'll be walking with a walker and increasing the distance that you walk each day. Your therapist will help you in knowing when it is time to no longer use your assistive device for walking. You should drink plenty of fluids and eat fruits and vegetables to combat constipation. A prosthetic joint could possibly attract the bacteria from an infection located in another part of your body. Let your dentist know that you now have a total joint replacement so you can take preventative antibiotics before your routine checkups. After your total joint surgery, you may call the orthopedic unit if you have additional questions at 614-257-2725. Please call your physician's office for questions about medication or if you need refills. Your physician's office wants us to remind you to give them ample time when you need a refill of medication. Thank you for viewing this video. The better prepared you are for your joint replacement, the easier recovery will be.